Hi there, uh, it's Mark, your Madison Cork Dork. Today I'll be uh, discussing a fun um, alcohol, if you will, um, in that I hauled a bunch of alcohol, um, wine, obviously, and that I'm also going to discuss perhaps the difference uh, between a cork dork, like myself, and a wine snob. So first and foremost, um, I would like to say that normally I wouldn't try to spend less than $10 on a bottle of wine. Um, but this time round, I uh, decided to go ahead with those kinds of purchases and actually through a competitor um, because my store uh, world market is not open. Um, I decided to uh, go ahead and make some purchases. So um, here they all are. I have this one really set me off onto this uh, journey. This is Gnarly Head Old Vine Zinfandel. Um, it is... Yeah, basically someone on my app, Vivino, actually gave a pretty good, um, halfway decent um, endorsement of uh, this uh, wine. It is the lowest priced one uh, that I had purchased, which was at like $7.49. So um, obviously on Vivino, I'll give it my own ratings and thoughts. Um, but yeah, I am officially in the summer of Zinfandel, so that's my first Zin purchase. Um, and I have four more and then, uh, we'll be going into the, um, differences between cork dork and, uh, wine snob. So Bogle, Old Vines Inn, another popular brand that I believe you should probably look into. Um, and of course I am, while we're going through this as Zinfandel advocate, um, I think it's a type of wine, a varietal, if you will, that has been, uh, overlooked and underappreciated and what people associate Zinfandel with is uh, white Zin, which is the rosé, actually, kind of Zinfandel. Um, and, of course, over the time, of course, of several years, it's obviously decreased in popularity. But, nevertheless, um, try the regular kind of Zinfandel. You will be pleasantly surprised. So, on to another brand. This one here is Klein. Another old Vine Zinfandel as well. Um, don't know what the price point on that one was, but again, all of these are under $10. Um, here's another well-known brand, Francis Ford Coppola Zinfandel. Um, so we obviously know him as the director of The Godfather, but um, believe it or not, he's got a lot of different kinds of... Uh, wines that he produces, and I've only had one of his, which was the claret. Um, claret is actually the British term for Bordeaux. Um, basically, uh, his version is primarily Cabernet Sauvignon as part of the grape, um, but I believe there is most likely some Merlot uh, in there as well. And then lastly, under $10, and the most expensive one that I had purchased is uh, Bon Terra uh, Zinfandel, and this is organic. Um, what that translates to is, well, to be honest with you, it's really kind of strange because when it comes to organic certification and whatnot, um, even like throughout the world, um, there's no real uh, unifying term as to what it is to have organic grapes, to grow wine organically, naturally, etc. Uh, you would think something like that of huge importance today would be well-defined and a set of guidelines that everyone would adhere to in the wine world. Alas, that is not what's happened and that is not happening. And I really wish if that is such a big deal for some people, it's not necessarily a big deal for me. Um, I really wish the wine industry would get uh, behind a unifying definition um, because it is a concern that many consumers have. So, on to the difference between a wine snob and a cork dork. So, I'm a cork dork. Um, to describe myself as such, um, I'm basically an educator. Um, I love wine, clearly. That's why I've been doing these videos. Um, but also, I love learning about it and I love sharing this knowledge. Um, you know, I used to be, um, some of you probably know that I used to be a teacher. Um, and when you get interested in the world of wine, uh, generally speaking, there's something, some overlaps that people see. 
Um, so, for example, my interest in geography and history, um, you know, economics, politics, like wine reaches all of that. I mean, even if we were to look at Zinfandel, which at some point I'll probably uh, do a video maybe uh, this Thursday on Zinfandel itself. Um, there's history behind Zinfandel. Um, and part of it actually, um, although at one point was considered purely American, it turns out the grape comes from somewhere else. So I'll uh, tell you that fun origin story as well. So a wine snob is someone who has the superior a sense of knowledge in that whatever he or she says goes and that um, they look down on you for your purchases or your limited knowledge or they view um, wines in such and such a way. So um, what's fun and funny is that Wine Folly, a group that I follow on Facebook and also um, an educator, Madeline Paquette. And again, whenever you see these maps that I show on um, these videos, um, they come from the Wine Folly book. So Wine Folly, again, a great educational tool. Um, put out a Facebook comment saying, uh, what are some of the more ridiculous or strange wine snobby interactions that you've had? And um, this uh, today they actually posted an article that contained what they felt were the top 50 most wine snobby things to say. And none of these you'll hear coming out of my mouth. I guarantee you that. That's just not cool. So I'm just going to like share with you some uh, that uh, seem to be the snobbiest of them all. So um, here we go. First off, we'll start out with mine, which made the, the list at number 27. And again, 100% true. So I've done tastings at my place of work. I get annoyed when customers ask which specific region of California the cab slash Cabernet Sauvignon they are trying is from. Once I say something other than Napa, I can sense their opinion changing by looking at their faces. Like this is 100% true. Like there's this really awesome wine called Juggernaut, Juggernaut Cabernet. I cannot uh, recommend this wine enough. Really good. Expensive, sure. Um, it's within $30 typically. Um, but if you want to try a good cab, go for that, you know, splurge on that one. Um, and it was the customer, one of the customers was like, once I told him, he looked at me and he says, mm, not complex enough. And I'm like, really? Like, this is not complex enough for you? It's like, Napa is a... Um, what do I want to call it? An all or nothing kind of thing. Like if for some people, if a cab is not from Napa, that's it. It's a non-starter. And that I find is annoying and it limits um, your look on what the wine world has to offer. And quite frankly, um, you need to try a lot of different kinds of wines, bad ones and good ones um, to figure out, you know, maybe there are some Cabernets from different parts of the world or heaven forbid, California, um, that actually might taste good. So some other fun quotes. I can really smell the 2% of Petit Verdot. Yes, you can easily pick out Petit Verdot in a blend and even more specifically 2%. Like, come on, how can anyone's smelling sensations get that specific? I don't even think a dog could have that kind of a specificity. Um, let's see, what's another one? Um, a wine snob flat out refused to drink anything from a screw cap. That's just dumb. Um, I guess none of these bottles have um, screw caps. Generally speaking, red wines don't. A lot of white wines do. And I will not uh, deter from that. A lot of fun wines do have screw caps on them. Uh, what else is some fun ones? He spoke over the server explaining the wine and kept referencing having traveled to the region it was from. My gosh, I even experienced that when I was, I mean, at work. Um, this one woman, like, 
was talking about how great the winery was and that she was glad we had it. And like, she's been there. And every time she came in, she was always like, Oh yes, I've been here. And it's like, lady, I remember you obviously. And um, it's like, come on, you know, like, I don't care that you've been there. Um, like you keep bringing it up. I mean, it's cool that you've been there. Don't get me wrong, but you know, bring it up all the time, like as a name dropper or something like that. It's just, so annoying. Um, they presume to tell a winemaker how to make wine because they knew better. Wow. Okay. That, that, yeah. I'll try not to go too deep into that one. That should be self-explanatory. Um, when someone tells everyone that at a tasting, not to taste the Okay, hold on. Let me start from the top. When someone tells everyone at a tasting not to taste a wine because it's just no good based on his slash her own personal taste. Again, at when I'm working at my store, I don't tell you what to like. I don't tell you what you should like if I need to make a recommendation, you know, if a customer asks things. My job is to try to figure out what you like, and then see if I can't find something that you like based on what you tell me. Um, and I do my best to try to meet you halfway or hopefully exceed your expectations. This one is just as ridiculous as the earlier one. Was pouring at a show, the person tasted a Sauvignon Blanc and insisted it must be clone number so-and-so for about five descriptive minutes. Badgered me if I could confirm it. I checked later and they were wrong, which made me happy. Honestly, how someone could even get that, unless you're like actually the winemaker, you probably can't tell what clone a grape is of a particular wine. So ridiculous. Um, let's see. Wine waiter sniffed the cork of a very tainted wine and told me there was nothing wrong with it. They refused to smell the actual wine. Wow. Just wow. You can tell with, you can tell readily whether or not a wine is corked. In order to determine that, um, a lot of times the wine will smell like damp cardboard. Um, that's basically what's called cork taint, or if the wine is corked, it means that the cork has had a negative impact on the flavor slash smell of the wine, and therefore don't drink it. Um, and I wouldn't want to necessarily be a Karen, but at the same time, if you're paying money at a restaurant, um, and you know that a wine is corked, this is one of those times that I would legitimately ask for a manager. And I don't want to be that person, but if it's bad, if it's legitimately bad, I authorize you to be that person. Um, Cause that's kind of like the point as to why they let you smell the wine before they pour more of it. Otherwise, why would they do that? You know? Uh, okay. This one's funny. Bust down an Excel spreadsheet of their seller on their iPhone to explain to me that they can't buy any new cab soft because they quote, have a lot of O fives to go through. Wow. Someone told me it was a windy city because he could taste dust on the grapes. I don't even know what the hell that means. I, I honestly, I, I don't know what the hell that means. Hmm. Let's see, what else is a fun one? A couple asking at every winery if they scrape the leaves to every tasting room's room staff's amusement. If not, the wine was not up to standard for them to try. After three unsuccessful winery visits, I realized they wanted to say stir the lease and had no idea what that even was. Lease, um, 
to kind of like try to put it in a simpler terms um it's kind of like the yeastiness that some wines have especially like uh sparkling wine slash champagne where um they let it um it's kind of like sit on the wine for a long time to give it a nice creamy kind of sensation bready biscuity kind of thing um oh this one's fun I recall one person coming into my wine shop asking for a Ferrari Carno Fumé Blanc, Carano, whatever. I did not have a bottle in stock, so I steered her to another similar barrel-aged Sonoma County Sauvignon Blanc. The woman was insistent that I give her a Fumé Blanc because, and I paraphrase, I don't like Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, so Sauvignon Blanc and Fumé Blanc are actually the same thing. Uh, Fume is, I believe, um, a word that Robert Mondavi uh, used to sort of like give Sauvignon Blanc an American name slash style. I honestly don't know how much of what I said is 100% accurate. I just know that it was definitely Robert Mondavi who came up with the name Fume, and I'm pretty positive it has to do with like American um, separation from Sauvignon Blanc. Let's see. The smelling of armpits to clean the nose palate. You don't smell your arm, uh, armpits if you want to cleanse your nose palate. What you what you do actually is you smell your wrist, uh, and it does um, help you clear out um, your sensations of smell to make sure that you're not. Um, it, it helps you identify more grapes to put it as simply as possible. Mm-hmm. My parents' friend, an Italian, upon hearing I opened a Spanish wine bar, proclaimed Rioja is mere grape juice. Um, no. No. That's just exceptionalism at its best. <laughs> this one is beyond me. 35 years ago, a man ordered Vuvclico Rosé. Um, which is kind of like to put this in context, a basically standard, uh, recognizable, if you will, and pretty good um, champagne from the obviously champagne region of France. After tasting the wine, he asked to pour some in an ashtray for his poodle, poodle dog. He said, quote, yes, the dog normally drinks port, but champagne is also okay. Wow. Uh, do, do, do. Gosh, the line I only drink French wines, obviously. Uh, let's see. This was at a sit down tasting of some high end California cabs. The dude across from us said. <laughs> Whoa, there is so much oak in this wine. Wait while I pull the splinters out of my teeth. Right. Yeah, don't don't be that person. Um Let's see. Look to do. They told me that American wine is for lesser palates, right? Um, and maybe just one other last one, if I can't find a good one here. Oh, here's one. Someone asked if I was pouring a Cabernet. I said I was. A Cabernet Sauvignon. She said, no, I just want a Cabernet. I said, are you asking for a Cabernet Franc? She looked at me as if I was an idiot, and I said, Cabernet, there is a difference between Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet without Sauvignon, and you obviously don't know the difference. Uh, yeah, um, we're here to help clarify terms, and um, that's, like, important, okay? Cabernet Franc is different from Cabernet Sauv, if or Sauvignon. Um, sometimes we call them Cabernet. Sometimes we call uh, Cabernet Sauvignons uh, Cab Sauv. Um, generally speaking, um, we're here to help define terms from you. And in the 
language games, so to speak, of the wine world, we understand that um, if someone says, I'm looking for a Cabernet, um, what they mean is Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, but if someone's trying to help you and clarify um, to help you, if like, are you looking for a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Cabernet Franc, there is a difference. And, you know, they're trying to help you. Anyway, so um, I guess in short, cork dorks are people that um, want to learn, want to help learn uh, others, um, the, the differences in wine and the, the we want to share knowledge and um, we want to teach you that way you can um, learn and enjoy wine on a deeper level. And not only am I um, not a wine snob, but I'm drinking, heaven forbid, wines that are under $10. And furthermore, Zinfandel, which is a grape that is not even hardly popular. And it's definitely not an Napa Cab, but screw you. I like it. And I know I'm going to enjoy, hopefully, at least one of these bottles. Uh, anyways, this is Mark here, Madison Cork Dork. Um, beware of the wine snob. And thanks for watching. Hopefully, I'll be. Yeah, I'll uh, do a video on Thursday on Zinfandel and the fun origin stories. After all, it is my favorite grape. And if I've been through Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, um, I might as well uh, do a quick lesson on uh, Zinfandel. Have a fantastic rest of the day.